as you find your seat, would you also find your Bible? There's one in the pew in front of you. You might read yours on your phone. We'll be in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. And we'll begin at the 11th verse. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. I invite you to hear this story about Jesus. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God from long ago for all God's people today. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, for every good and gracious gift, recognized and unrecognized, expressed or observed, for every gift we give you thanks. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be holy and acceptable in your sight. Offer us a word of challenge, a word of comfort, a word of hope. May these words be your words, and may they bring you glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I think you all know, you might not know, I have two uh, school-age children, and uh, we've got a pretty good bedtime routine going now. It was not always so smooth as it is now, so for those of you who are right in the thick of it, I am praying for you. If you are not quite there yet, you'll get there someday, and if you've already gotten through this season of your life, you can say amen. (laughs) Ours goes like this. It is uh, bath, pajamas, brush your teeth, read to yourself, read the Bible, say your thank yous, say your prayers, go to bed. Takes probably an hour, an hour and a half, if I'm being real honest. It also starts about an hour to an hour and a half later this week than it did last week because school's out now. (laughs) Thank yous are the newest part of our routine, and we've added this into our routine because of all the things that my husband and I have Uh, been reading. There's all kinds of science out there that says that saying thank you or what's called practicing gratitude is very good for you. It's a very good thing to do, not every once in a while, but every single day. Mentally, we know that it helps to reduce anxiety and stress. It increases our levels of happiness. We know socially that expressing gratitude to other people, folks you don't know at all and people you know well, that it helps us to feel closer to one another, and it even improves relationships over time. We know that people who practice gratitude generally sleep better, that they're more likely to care for themselves physically, and we certainly know that economically, when we practice gratitude, it tends to reduce our desire to acquire stuff because it helps us to be thankful for what we already have, not to mention what gratitude does for us spiritually. It's important that we say thank you. So we're trying to help our kids learn how to be thankful and practice gratitude and thankfulness. And we've tried a couple of things that just haven't worked over the years. We tried a gratitude jar where you wrote down what you're thankful for on a slip of paper. You put it in the jar. You see your gratitude grow over time. You look at the jar and you think, oh, these are all the things that I have to be grateful for. Uh, But we never could find enough paper or the paper we could find was already written on and was our jar clean and all the things. 
things. So we didn't do that for very long. And then we tried a, we tried a gratitude book that I bought on Amazon. And it had and like all of these activities that you do each and every day. It was like a face you could circle to say what mood you were in and a picture you could draw to express one thing that you're thankful for. And then you made a list. And our list always was the same two things. And this just didn't work for us long term. So finally, we just said, you know what? We're just going to start asking one another, what is one thing? What is one thing that you are saying thank you for today? What is one thing that you are saying thank you for today? And then everybody shares. Today, my thank you is, my thank you for today is, so ours uh, yesterday were, mine was annual conference. My thank you was annual conference. My son uh, found a really big rock in a stream. My daughter got a glass of lemonade, and my husband was thank you for watching Willy Wonka. So there you go. Those were our thank yous for yesterday. (laughs) And after we've all shared, we just say this. We just say, thank you, God. It just takes a moment. And honestly, the thank you time is my thank you. It's the best way that we end our day with a thank you. Because saying thank you for something that you experienced or something that you felt or witnessed, for something that happened to you or that you saw happen to someone else or something that you did for someone that you love, saying thank you is so simple, but it's also incredibly important. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and he's on his way to the cross. He's journeying between two places, between Galilee, which is a place full of his own people, and Samaria, which is a place full of not his own people. And he enters this village, and almost immediately he is swarmed by ten men, ten men who have been afflicted with leprosy. These are people who are begging for mercy, who are begging for healing. And Jesus provides this. He says, go show yourselves to the priests. And in an act of faith, they do. And as they do, they're made clean. They're restored. Leprosy was a disease that cut you off from everyone and from everything, and they get restored physically, but also socially, emotionally, mentally. They get made whole. And nine of these men, they keep on going back toward Jerusalem. One, he looks down and he notices that he's been healed and he turns back and he puts himself at Jesus' feet and he cries, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God, I praise you. This is the one. This is the only one to whom Jesus said, your faith has made you well. There's a lot of things that we could learn from this story. Here's just a few. We get to learn to notice. We learn to notice what there is to be thankful for. The leper looks down and he notices that he's been healed. He sees. We talk a lot about faith being a matter of believing without seeing. And that's right. That's true. But sometimes seeing is important too. Because all these men believed. And all of them were healed. But the one saw and noticed. And for that one, it made all the difference. He saw and he was able to recognize Jesus. Recognize him not just as the one who could heal him and did, but also the one who freed him and made him whole. The King James translation of this particular verse that Jesus responds, Jesus says to him, your faith has made you whole. He saw Jesus. He saw his goodness and his power and his salvation. And all of it became real for him. You might know the author Elizabeth Gilbert. She wrote Eat, Pray, Love. It was all the rage about 20 years ago, which makes me feel real old, but there you go. And she struggles with depression. And when her depression is really bad, she turns to a gratitude practice. The gratitude jar did work for her. She had a pen and paper handy. (laughs) She writes down her day's little victories on a slip of paper. Things like, I washed my hair today. I heard a beautiful bird song. I saw a sunrise. She writes all of those things down and she puts them in a jar. And then later in moments when she cannot see, when she cannot find something to be thankful for, she pulls a little gratitude slip out of her jar and she is reminded. She is reminded that there is always always, always something to be thankful for. 
even when it doesn't feel like it in our own lives. Even when we've just lost someone that we love or our prayers go unanswered or the news doesn't make any sense, even when we can't feel it and we don't understand it, there's always something to be thankful for. Can you see this? Is this something that is real for you? You know, you woke up today. You got out of bed. Maybe you have a place to sleep. Maybe you have a stable job that pays the majority of your bills. Maybe you have a neighborhood where you don't fear for your safety. Or maybe you've got a good friend if you don't have any of those other things. Maybe you've got electricity and clean running water. Maybe you had the opportunity to have an education. I could go on and on. You know, we could see these things as little as insignificant or not. It's all a matter of perspective. What we see and how we see it, it'll eventually become real for us one way or another. Glass half empty, glass half full, imperfect or full of potential. There's failure or there's opportunity. There's uncertainty or there's possibility. There's an enemy or there's a friend. There's a problem child or there's a beloved child of God. What we see shapes our reality and it shapes who we are. So one of the things we learn is to notice and to see reasons for our gratitude. One of the things we learn is to acknowledge, to recognize that everything has its source in God. Because once he saw, this man recognized where his healing had come from. He recognized where it had come from, and he turned back to acknowledge that he had seen. He acknowledged that he noticed that everything that was being made new in him had its source in God. Everything, friends, that we have has its source in God. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the beauty that we see, the laughter we share, the love that we express, the knowledge that we contain, our healing, our hope, our joy. All of it comes from God. There's a lot that you have. And probably a lot that you have is on your own merit. These are things that you have earned along the way. But I'll also say to you today, there's a lot that you have that you did not earn that you did not deserve, and yet you were given anyway. One of the things we learn is to acknowledge where our good stuff comes from. We learn to name our gratitude, to express it, because this one, this man, thanked and praised God, not just with a tiny little voice, but with a big, loud voice. When was the last time that you that you said are real, honest, and true for you, and true for you only, not using someone else's words, but your own words, said thank you to God for all the ways that God has been good to you in your life, for all the ways that God provides for you, for the ways that God rules and reigns in your heart, for the ways that God heals your hurts and redeems your failures, for God's mercy and God's unending, endless grace to you, for all the ways that God fills in your shortcomings and, and makes good on your sin for the ways that God forgives you and sets you free even from those hurts that run deep from all the times that God has seen you through when you didn't know how there would be a way for the love that God has for you that in Jesus never ends. When was the last time that you said thank you? Maybe it was just a moment ago. Maybe it's been a while. Where are you in this story today? Are you like the nine running on? Are you like the one running back? Because you've just simply got to say something because you can't stay quiet. We learn to express, to name our gratitude. And we learn that we've got to repeat our gratitude because this one not only got down to say thank you, he shouted it out too. Gratitude isn't just a once in a while, every once and again, when it's convenient and when it makes sense and when it feels right kind of thing. It's something that we practice over and over again. It's something that we repeat, something that we do with our words. We say it, we shout it, we write it, we type it, we do gratitude with our actions and how we treat one another, how we treat ourselves, how we behave toward God. We say thank you with our time and with our resources, and with our abilities, and with our knowledge. We, we hope and we pray that we use it all wisely and well. We, we give our time and our energy and our resources to the people and the places where it's needed, and where we know and we trust it will make an impact. This one, he got down and he shouted out. We learn to repeat our gratitude. So we notice, 
and we acknowledge and we express and we repeat. This is how God's people say thank you. You might be familiar with Martin Luther. He was a 16th century reformer of the church. He was asked once to describe the nature of true worship. What is the nature of true worship? He was asked, and he said, the 10th leper turned back. The 10th leper turned back, acknowledged, noticed, expressed, and repeated, this is how we worship our God. This is how we say thank you. We know that saying thank you doesn't make the tough stuff go away. Hard things come. They're here, and they have yet to materialize. Gratitude isn't a magic wand that gets rid of everything unpleasant, but it does change our perspective. It lifts our focus. It shifts our focus onto something greater. You might be aware we're beginning a renovation journey of some parts of our building here. We're doing this because we very truly believe that God is calling us not only to update our physical space, but also to expand our capacity to welcome inside them, to welcome new people into new opportunities to gather together and to grow in faith. We believe that there are some new and renewed opportunities that God has in front of us to be what we call a beloved community to be a beloved community here and with one another and for our neighbors. And what we believe is that a renovation of some of our space is the best way to live into that call. And in a few weeks, what we'll have an opportunity to do is to live into one particular expression of gratitude via a financial commitment as we work together to be a beloved community. But that's not today. Today we're saying thank you. And so you'll have a chance to say thank you on your leaf in just a moment. I'll give you instructions there. But I thought, as a way of getting started, I might share some of my thank yous. And so what I want to say to God is, thank you, God, for your forgiveness and for your mercy and your grace, unending, unchanging, that we see in Jesus and that we experience through your Holy Spirit. I say thank you to God for Church of the Messiah and the privilege that it is to be one of your pastors. I say thank you for putting us in the middle of Westerville for over 200 years. I say thank you for all the ways that uh, people have made Messiah who we are. Thank you for those of you, all of us who are here now, and thank you for the people who aren't here yet. I say thank you, God, for the heart of love that you've given us. I say thank you for the family that you are making us into. It's a family that is diverse in perspective, in experience, in ability, in persuasion, and capacity, and resource, and all of it, God, is centered around you. God, I say thank you for the way that you have let us serve with our hands and our feet. You've been our heart and our mind. I say thank you, God, for the way that you have called us to love and serve our community near and far. I say thank you for the next call that you have put on our life, our life together to make space and to make our space a place where people can gather and grow together. Those are my thank yous. What would you add? What's your thank you? How would you begin to say thank you for all the ways that God has moved in your own life, for all that you see, for all that you feel, for all with which God has blessed you? How would you begin to say thank you to God for this church community? You don't have to be here for very long to say thank you for something. You can be here for the first time and still participate in all this today. How can you say thank you for all that God has done, for all that God is doing, and for all that God has yet to do as together we make new disciples for Jesus and transform the world? You've got a leaf card. So would you take it out now? We've got a prompt on the screen just in case you need a little bit of a reminder for what you're being asked to do. Would you share with us on your leaf just one thing that you are grateful for as it relates to Church of the Messiah, or as it relates to God's faithfulness in your own life. Would you take just a moment and reflect, and then we'll say a closing prayer together.
Will you join me in prayer? You'll see the prayer on the screen. Almighty God, as we journey through a season of growth and change, give us your vision for Church of the Messiah. Keep our eyes fixed on you. Deepen our faith in you. Empower our service of you. Engage us in sharing our story about you. Make us a center for sharing your word and your love in our community. Break through at Messiah in ways far beyond our ask or imagination. Amen.